In this video, we are going to take a look at how this author generates thousands of dollars every single month from self-publishing children's picture books on Amazon KDP and how you can do it too. Welcome to my channel. And if you are interested in learning more about generating an income online with things like self-publishing books, then please consider subscribing to my channels so that you don't miss out on any new videos I upload every single week, just like this one. Now, last year I published my very own children's picture book, which I wrote, illustrated, and published myself on Amazon KDP. And I did that in a pretty short space of time with a very minimal budget. I didn't hire any illustrators or anything like that to help me with the process. What I did do though, is I did take a course called the Children's Book Creator Course, which showed me that I could actually create a children's picture book without having to spend thousands of dollars on an illustrator and how I could do it myself without any actual illustrating experience. I will pop a link down in the description box below to that course if you are interested in taking a look at the course that I took. And I think some of you might wonder whether you can actually make money from self-publishing children's books when there is so much competition out there from traditionally published children's book authors who have the the budget and the money to pay for very expensive illustrators and print with very high quality paper and materials and things like that. The short answer to that question is yes, you can. You can make a full-time income from self-publishing children's picture books if you are willing to put in the time and the effort. One important aspect to any online business is, in my opinion, learning from others who are already successful doing the thing that it is that I want to do. Personally, I spend a lot of time looking at other books and other publishers who are already making the kinds of books that I want to make. And I look at particularly the ones that are selling and making money. I want to figure out what it is that they are doing to make them successful and making their books actually sell. What marketing strategies are they using? What kind of advertising are they using? How active are they on social media? And what social media platforms do they focus their attention on? What kind of stories are they telling? What style of illustrations are they using? These are just some of the things that I want to look at to see what I can implement into my own self-publishing business to try to reach the kind of success that I have in mind for myself. And when I say I look at these things to implement into my own business. I'm not got, talking about going out and blatantly copying anybody, copying anybody's stories or illustrations and things like that. I'm looking at the strategies and the tactics that they're using within their self-publishing business. Now I have done quite a few videos like this, mainly on low content books, books like coloring books, activity books, and puzzle books. But this is the first time I'm making a video like this on a high content book. So I'm really excited to share this one with you today and I hope that you are too. Firstly, let's take a look at the publisher and the author that I've chosen to have a look at today and investigate or deep dive into a little bit further. So I basically just went to the amazon.com website, the marketplace, and went to the children's book section to try to find a self publisher. So I did ignore any of these books that are traditional published because we want to look at people who are self-publishing because that's what we're doing and we need to compare with other people who are doing the exact same thing that we're doing. There's no point trying to investigate what a traditionally published book is doing because they have the backing of a publisher. So I did go through and find a self-published book author and I came across this book here, Kindness is My Superpower by Alicia Ortego. Now this author is self-published and if you're wondering how we know that, all you do is you scroll down here to the additional information about the product and where next to publisher it says independently published. This means that the book is published through Amazon KDP. If it was traditionally published or published anywhere other than Amazon, it would have something else there. So this is a book published through KDP. So this author is possibly generating over $7,000 per month with her books, her children's picture books, and she has currently seven books published. The next thing you might be wondering is how do I know that she is making over $7,000 per month? Well, in all honesty, I don't. Only she knows how much she is making. But there are some tools out there that I use to help make an educated estimate of what these books could be selling 
every single month. Firstly, we just need to estimate how many books are selling every month using a book sales calculator tool. There are lots of them out there that you can use. They are all free. Just Google something like Amazon book sales calculator. I just use TCK Publishing's tool. And the way that this tool works is by using the book's BSR. Now a BSR is short for bestseller rank. A bestseller rank determines the popularity of a book within the Amazon's store, the Amazon marketplace. The lower the number, the better. The lower that number, the more books that that publisher or that author is selling. So for example, when we take a look at Kindness Is My Superpower, we scroll down at the time of filming this video, the bestseller rank is 2,425. We type 2425 into here, it's a book, a paperback book, and we click calculate sales. So the sales per month estimated for this book with that bestseller rank is around 1,151. I took the bestseller rank of each of the seven books that are currently published and entered it into the Amazon sales calculator tool, which gives me estimates of what each book could be selling every single month. When I was looking at this publisher within her author central profile, it doesn't show the bestseller rank. So I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how popular these books are. So if you take a look at this one, we've got Patience is My Superpower, 38,993. Kindness is My Superpower, 2,464. Honesty is My Superpower, 36,000. Every single one of her books has absolutely amazing bestseller ranks, meaning that they are selling regularly, lots of copies every single day. There isn't a one of her books that is not doing well. Now, I did the figures on this yesterday before filming this video today. So the figures that I pulled up yesterday might slightly differ from what we just had a look at on the screen. But the bestseller ranks for the books that I looked at yesterday, book one, has a bestseller rank of 2,543, which equates to around 1,110 sales. Book two has a bestseller rank of around 17,055, which equates to around about 2,308 sales per month estimated. Book three has a bestseller rank of around 49,989, which means they could be getting around 92 sales for the month. Book four has a bestseller rank of 13,521, and they could be selling around 291 per month. Book five has a bestseller rank of 20,443, which means it could be selling around 204 sales per month. Book six had a bestseller rank of around 41,551, and that one could be selling around 109 copies per month. And book seven had a bestseller rank of 35,100, which is around 126 sales per month for that book. So you can see that every single book she's published has a fantastic bestseller rank, all of them under 50,000, which is amazing. It's so inspiring to see that she's got these seven books and every single one of them is doing so well. Then I needed to work out the royalty of each book because the selling price you see on Amazon is not what you get. We have to take out printing costs and then we have to take out Amazon's share of that as well. So we need to work out the royalty of each book that that publisher would be receiving from every sale. And to do that, we just simply use a tool on the Amazon website itself, the Amazon Royalty Calculator tool. So to use this tool, all we need to do is enter some information about the book. So it's a paperback. It will be a premium color interior with white paper. The reason it will be premium is because to use standard color interior with white paper, your book needs to be a minimum of 72 pages, I believe. So this book will have premium color paper because this book has 30 eight pages. So 38 pages. And we also need to look at the selling price of $10.88. We take that information and we pop it into here, 38 pages selling for $10.88. We calculate and that will tell us that the royalty that the publisher will receive is $2.88 for every book sold. So I just went in, I did that for every single book and worked out the royalty that each of the publisher's books will be making. I then times that royalty by the figures that I was given from the TCK book sales calculator. And it looked a little something like this. The book sales estimates times by the royalty. I worked out that book one is making approximately $3,200. Book two is making approximately $815. Book three is making approximately $380. Book four is making approximately $1,045. Book five is making possibly $746. Book six is possibly making $450. And book seven making possibly $520 per month, which adds up to 
$1,856 total monthly income. Like I say, this is just a guess. We do not know exactly how much this person is making, but there's a fairly good chance that it is around this number. So how have they done this? Because I think we would all agree that bringing in $7,000 a month with some children's books would be a pretty great income and a pretty great online business to have. So first of all, they have created seven books, as I said, all aimed at the same age of children. Let's go through and have a look at those books. We can see this series has been named my superpower books series and we have the first book, Kindness is My Superpower, a book about empathy, kindness, compassion. The next book is Breathing is My Superpower, a mindfulness book for kids to feel calm and peaceful. Number three, Acceptance is My Superpower, a book about diversity and equality. Number four, Gratitude is My Superpower, a book about giving thanks and practicing pr positivity. Number five, Confidence is My Superpower, a kid's book about believing in yourself and developing self-esteem. Book six, Honesty is My Superpower, a book about telling the truth and overcoming lying. And number seven, Patience is My Superpower, a book about learning how to wait. So all of these books are aimed at the same age of children. Age of children is around about three to six. They are all with similar themes and topics in their book. There is a saying within book publishing and that's more books sells more books. So it's a very big thing, a very popular thing to do with any genre or any kind of book, whether it's for children or adults, whether it's fiction or not, to publish books in a series because it just seems to help with sales when you have books in a series. Series are great to entice buyers to buy more of your books, especially if they really connected with and liked the books. You can also connect them all together with the series link. So what that looks like is when you are on the page of a particular book, just here we've got this link, book one of seven of my superpower books. When you click on that link, it opens up a new page with all the books listed. This is a good way for customers to see all the other books in the series that are all related so if they do like the idea of one of them or the topic of one of them knowing that there are more related books to the one that they're looking at they can see them all in one place now if we look at the themes of the books this publisher has gone with meaningful life lessons teaching life morals types of topics children's books can do really well with these important life topics like this and also books that are just funny stories also do well so don't all so feel that you need to write the type of book you don't want to write just because somebody else's is doing well. Funny books do well, books about nothing do well, and books about very important topics do well too. I think it's more about the story, the crafting of the story, the illustrations, and the way that you market it. So I don't think the topics that this publisher or author has chosen is specifically is what making this series do so well. But finding a theme that works for them and topics that work for them that they obviously enjoy writing about and replicating that through all her other books has worked really well for this publisher. We can see all the books have really great reviews and ratings. And if you just look down here at the bottom, I'm not sure if you noticed this, this publisher has started publishing books in different languages. So she's having her books translated, which is another great way to add some additional income to your mainstream of income from your English books. Translating books is a really great way to get those additional customers who you may not have had necessarily from just having only books in English. Okay, so next up, I went to have a look at this author or this publisher's website. Very nice laid out website, very professional looking, very simple. There's not a whole lot to it. You don't need to have a really complicated, flashy website. What this publisher has done is perfectly fine. She's using it to showcase her books in the best light. We have some references here to some PR type of links, places where she's probably been interviewed and things like that. We have some reviews and then we have a little blurb about the author. So this author is a school teacher and an avid children's book author. So she's saying that she's worked for 20 years with children. She's also a mother of two. And because of the fact she is a teacher, she's a believer in the power of educating children at home from an early age. So the fact that she's a school teacher, she's a mum, that's just all adding credibility to the strength of writing, the, the strength of the crafting of the stories within this book, the fact that they are going to be educational because she is a teacher. It's going to have some educational elements in there. And that's just adding more, I don't know if legitimacy is the word to use here, but it's just just adding more power to the fact that she's really all about trying to help educate children and some customers
customers see that as really important, especially in the books that do have some sort of important life lesson or some moral topic in it. It's not the be all and end all. If you're not a school teacher, it doesn't mean you can't write a children's book, but it's just playing on that strength of she is qualified in a way to write these kind of books, if you get my meaning. Now we've got some YouTube videos here on probably some previews of the books and we've got some free printable downloads for joining her email list. Now I did join her email list. I haven't had any emails yet, so I can't really say what she includes in her emails. I received that free printable, the kindness cards. But aside from that, I'm not sure exactly yet what she's using her email list for. I'm assuming that it would be used at the launch of a book to help generate some early sales on the book. But when there isn't a book launching, I'd be interested to see what it is that she does email about and how often she does that, how often she emails her list. Because I think email lists are probably the most important marketing tool that you can have. It's a great way to have security over knowing that you have a way to contact people who are interested in your books and your brand. If for some reason your books were not published on Amazon anymore, or if you just want to talk about a promotion, if you want to talk about a new book launching and you want to generate sales and kick off that sales proof in within the Amazon algorithm. Now, if we look at social media, let's see what social media platforms she is active on. So we've got Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Goodreads, YouTube, and Instagram, all the normal ones that I think everybody would be using. Goodreads, if you haven't heard of that, is a social media platform specifically for books. And it, it's not so much social media platform, but it's a place away from Amazon that you can go and you can review books. So if we go over to Facebook and we have a look at her Facebook profile, we have not a massive following on here, but it does look like she posts fairly regularly on here. Looks like every week or so there is a post all around her books or the topic of books or schooling and things like that. She's doing some giveaways on here. She, you can win her book. She's doing some teasers about her next book and what it could be about. She's just showcasing some good reviews about the books, helping to build up some of that proof of readers, previous readers liking the book and then being a five-star read and showcasing them in a really good light. Now, one thing I'd be interested to see is if she's running ads. What we can do here is if you scroll down to a page transparency box down here and click see all, you can see if this page is running ads. This page is not currently running ads. The next social media media platform was Twitter and it just looks like she's cross posting from there. There isn't a massive following on Twitter. We'll take a quick look at Pinterest. Again, not much happening on Pinterest, but still just cross promoting. So she has her Goodreads profile set up. A few followers here, but getting lots of good ratings on Goodreads for her books as well. Same as on Amazon. Now she has a YouTube channel, which I thought was quite interesting. And although she doesn't have a massive amount of subscribers and she's not posting a whole lot here, it's interesting that she's doing some crafting type of videos to help sort of bring in some views, which would then hopefully translate over onto people being interested in her books as well. This could be a really good strategy, I think, if you were to put in the time and the consistency with it to build a YouTube channel. I think children's channels and publishing can do really well with YouTube, but YouTube does take time and it does take hard work and you have to be really consistent and persistent before you see any results. But I think that that's a great idea that she's got there. She's just not really being that consistent with it. Probably not enough to make any kind of impact on the site of her books anyway but every little bit helps and getting yourself and your books and your brand out there on any platform is going to be helpful and then we've got Instagram and it looks like this is probably where she's most active she's got the most followers here on Instagram I imagine she's probably posting to Instagram and then cross posting to all the other social media platforms that she has and yeah just posting the same stuff getting different people there's going to be different people looking at her stuff on Instagram as there is on YouTube as there is on Pinterest and so it's just gathering all the different audiences and probably funneling them into her email list to build up her email list. Now, we can't see what her email list is like or how many people are subscribed to it, but I think across the board, no matter what online business that you're in, building an email list is one of the most powerful things that you can do. It can be done for free. It does take a little bit of time to build up, but then you have this group of people who are interested in you and your brand or in your books or your products, whatever it is you've got, and you can contact them at any time. There is no filtering of how much of your audience sees it as you get with social media like Instagram and Facebook. There are people who follow you but only a small percentage of them actually see your posts whereas email lists you can contact all them people at once
accounts and there's no one intercepting how many of them actually receive your email. If you've got a thousand people subscribed to your list, you send an email and a thousand people receive that email. And it's a great way to just stay in contact with those people, keep them updated on your business, what you're doing, your projects, your books, what you've got going on, what books you've got coming out, what's happening with the books you've already got published and things like that. So everything combined has made this publisher see success. She's continuously building on a series that has books that are already doing very well in it. So anytime that she launches a new book, there is a pretty good chance that it is also going to sell well. Having a cohesive brand as well as consistent themes throughout her books is also working very well. Building an email list where she does offer freebies helps to build up a group of people who have most likely read the books or at least one of the books that she's already published and they like them enough to join her email list. This means that she has a way to market for free to a large group of people who are already excited about her books, about her brand when a new book launches. Having people buy your book from day one is very powerful with the uh, Amazon algorithm. It's a powerful signal to that algorithm that people want this book, people like this book, which helps get it in the search results organically from day one of your book being for sale in the Amazon marketplace. Now, there is also the chance that there is some additional marketing strategies that this publisher uses, particularly when launching a book that we just can't see or because they don't have a look book launching right now, we can't see any additional marketing efforts. But for the most part, utilizing social media, an email list, and possibly some Amazon ads is what is making consistent sales for this series of books. Hopefully you have picked up some tips on ways to market and promote your own books if you have some published, or hopefully you are inspired to go ahead and write and publish your very own children's book if you have had it on your bucket list as something you've always wanted to do. Maybe now is the time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.